Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. ANC members or supporters or former supporters or members voted for the MK in numbers. The problem is why we, we tend our politicians not to be our comrades anymore. They are our heroes. We are clapping hands for them even if they do wrong. Is it a coincidence that suddenly people in the position of leadership are now business leaders? Remember the nation now Comrades must understand, they are leading a very sophisticated nation. Mm. Majority of the comrades, once they are in leadership, they become so arrogant, they become celebrities. You can't tell them anything. Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. <laughs> Just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Need to refresh and unwind? Come to Wild Things at Meropa Casino and Conference Center where you get to enjoy quad bags, swimming pools, water park, restaurants, kids games, reptile park, camping, birds park, and many other activities. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. This is a special episode about elections. Um, what we are observing right now, what's happening in South Africa right now. And we are with uh, Dr. Pap, my vote. I mean, when you are a doctorate, a PhD holder, it means you can analyze anything. And I'm glad that you are here so that we just we just talk about the current situation right now in the country. How are you? Fine, thanks. And how are you, Cappuccino? Good, good, and, good. And uh, good day to your viewers. What do you want Hey! It's, it's one of those. It was a hurdle. Mm. Um... Unexpectedly so, a dark horse came from behind, took over. That's Let's talk about IEC first. I see there's a dark horse, so you tell me what a dark horse is. Uh, but IEC, you know, uh, when I, I arrived at my voting station, there were almost 50 people ahead of me. Mm -hmm. It's just a rough estimation. It could be less. But I had to stay there for three hours, 43 minutes for me to cast a vote. Then I was wondering what is it that is actually making that that line doesn't move. Mm. And when I got inside, I saw the IEC personnel trying very hard to scan my ID, which was a process that took almost five minutes mm. just to scan my ID. And I realized that we have a problem. And I noted that there were many people that came and they went back but a little while late. There are many people who left the line and said, hey, I left kids somewhere. I have to go take the kids. Where the person has been on the queue for more than two hours. And that's from where I'm voting is the first time it happens. We never, like, maybe spent even more than 30 minutes, no matter how long the queue is. So that is actually one glitch that I noticed. And they said, there's this narrative that those snake long uh, 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 queues was because of the higher voter turnout, which I think is rubbish. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I think it is because of the glitches that made those queues not to move. Mm -hmm. And it disadvantaged a lot of people. Yeah, Capacino, um, let me start by indicating to you, Gore, for me to just justify my arguments, as a scholar, I have to use certain methods. Mm. Then, and for this podcast, I have to employ ethnographic uh, method so that I can be able to get the thematic uh, similarities you see, no. in terms of what... You see why we need you here. I don't even understand what you're <laughs> talking about, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, I wanted to the, the, the thematic relevance yes. so that I must be able to argue from a point of view which is scholarly in okay. nature. It's kind of what I know, not comrade, but... Uh, you are and, a DJ, uh, so... You, you know, yeah. so, so the issue of IEC Cappuccino in terms of the analysis from what I observed and what I, I researched on, it's, it's, it's on two issues, mm. both human resources and the budget issue. Mm. Remember what they did, the IEC. Mm. Parliament uh, allocated some funds to political organizations. Yeah. Later on, it added more money to the political organizations for reasons that I don't know. Is it that money that uh, Julius was saying, 35 million came in, when they were not expecting it. 
Uh, no, I didn't hear you don't know about, it. about that one. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, it shows, it tells you, Hore, in a way, a certain portion of the money which was supposed to have gone to IEC for relevancy and ensuring technological advancements, high data, speed and everything, it mm. shows where it has gone somewhere else. Mm. That needs to be, that needs to be uh, rejected mm. as well. And then the other thing, Cappuccino, um, um, I think this is something that must be considered even for, for local government. This issue, I mean, got COVID, everything was shut, there was a shut, total shutdown. For three weeks. Why can't we do a shutdown for just voting? So that at least more people can have the courage. I mean, it's a holiday for most of the people. You mean uh, for non-essential services? Non-essential non services close. Let's go and vote from morning until that time. I mean, it's a legislative matter. You can't just decide it overnight. You go to a bar or you go to a liquor store. You find someone who asks, did you vote? Arakan, I'm working. Why are you selling liquor? And you wonder, how is this thing serving the country? Exactly. So you're suggesting that that day should be a public holiday where everything is shut except essential, essential services. services. We go and vote. And voter education needs to be intensified. Not, not use different methods. Mm. Mm. Use almost explore all the different methods which are there to ensure that there's voter education. Because the Section there's, there's 24 more than... has compromised a lot of people now. We'll come to that, but there's more than 100,000 spoiled votes right now as we're talking. 100,000 is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. T tell me about the Section 24. No, no, I mean, the, the, the issue of people, most of the people did not know. Mm -hmm. I had to send money to my kids to come and vote at home because they decided or no, when I was voted at the university. They, they didn't said, know that they can't vote there? No, no, they didn't know that they can't vote there. They said, said Papa, we hear or we cannot vote here. I said, no. Then we put money for you mm. because I was happy or at least they know the importance of casting a vote. Did you influence their voting choice? Actually, they vote, they influenced mine. <laughs> oh. I remember my. Kana, where do they school in? No, no, in one of the universities. In one South of the Africa, universities. In South Africa. Oh, it means it's Limpop, obviously. University of Limpop and it's That's young your people. Association. I'm trying to analyze. It's young people. Uh, um, I've, I've seen even the voter from when they announced, they announced those people. EFF got a lot of votes there. So it's young people who voted, who influenced Daddy to vote for a party. Good. No, no, that's your asset. That's, that's, no, 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 I'm that's, done. Don't that's know. What you are. We are moving with that no, one. No, it's fine. Let's leave it. Uh, my vote is my vote. And it has been a secret and it will remain a secret for me. Yeah, and it's yes. influenced this time for the first time. <laughs> what if she influenced me to vote for the ANC? I beg your no, my point is that they influenced you. Let us pass. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the, 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 from the IEC, let's talk about the handlers of the funders of the political parties. Okay. You mean, uh, what do you mean by funders? The funders of the handlers of the political parties. The Oppenheimers parties. and the what were the Rupert, yes. the 15 millions going to Bossa or Rice, whatever it is. You remember in one of the podcasts I indicated that there are people who are in the business of funding political organizations. Yes. Now, the question that I need to ask, even your viewers to make comments on, did they get value for their money? Nah. Did they win? Did they win? Are they happy? Yes, that's what I'm asking. I, I would reason from a DJ point of view. I think they are the happiest. Because remember, their black ball is the DA. Okay. Which seems to be punching right now and punching very well. And to fragment that black vote... Uh, uh, means because we don't have a, a, a visible new white party. That's true. We don't. There is no on the on the ISO, on Salvat, but we don't have it. Mm. And they've been funding, and then it fragmented everything. Now it's really tricky. So I think they won. And now, which means it's it's a hand parliament. We are going for coalitions now. Yeah, I mean, where we are now, it will take a miracle for the ANC to go to 50, which is now around 41% national. Yes. Uh, and I think the DA is around 22. We're talking now because the results are not yet final. And let me, let me just try to check uh, one of the TV channels.
Yeah. Yeah, it will tell us. It's still an advert. Um, it will tell us. No, no, no. I, I, I'm checking them here. Oh, you're checking them. The here. one I'm watching. Okay. And and uh, MK, it's around 12 to 13 percent. National. National. Yeah. Which is the third. Is it the black horse? Yeah, you're that's the about? black horse. And, and Cappuccino, we must be extra careful with this organization. This has got masterminds behind it. I'm telling you, my brother. Mm. It has got masterminds who are good at what they're doing. And, and they are we, playing we, politics and mm. they know politics. You remember we were having uh, Mr. Lula Mile? Yes. The representative of MK in Limpo was saying that we have people inside the NC who are part of us. And I can tell you from a, 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 a layman's perspective that ANC members or supporters or former supporters or members voted for the MK in numbers. No, no, they, actually, that's true because if you check what MK has done, it has eaten into um, ANC votes, mm. it has eaten into EFF votes, it, it has partially, in KZN, partially eaten into IFP votes. But the, the, the question is, what is it that the DA has done? What methodology did they apply? Mm. Because now, or is it maybe because of the handlers where they funded so well that the black voters must just spread around? Because, but they also made, they appealed to, to, to the rural voters in all the, in all the uh, 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 provinces. Let me tell you what DA did so well. With DA had a system of communicating with people from SMSs. I'm not sure if you have received any SMS from TA. There were continuous SMSs. I think they have a database of many South Africans to talk about the doomsday. This is scaremongering. Uh, if you vote for this party, South Africa will die. Ne? Mm -hmm. Issues of corruption. Those messages were talking about corruption a lot. And the third thing that the messages were talking about is the issue that DA is good, clean governance, service delivery, and all that. Mm -hmm. So they, that's another technological system that I don't know where they got our numbers because I don't remember sending DA my number. Mm -hmm. But they've been communicating with me. Yeah, but whatever that strategy they've used, let's congratulate them. They've done so well because they, they managed to keep almost their status quo mm -hmm. and they even improved while other parties are going down. Yeah. But still on the, on the same issue, uh, Capacino, liberation movements, the history has proved 30 years, most of the time, 25 to 30 years, they start going down. But, 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 but with the now. ANC, I, I never thought, I never saw it coming. Uh, I knew there would be a decline, but I was thinking maybe a decline can be around, uh, they can get a comfortable 53, 54, National. I didn't know or, or, or maybe I've never really, really, really thought about the fact that ANC could be around 41% right now. My brother, um, the problem is why? We, we tend our politicians not to be our comrades anymore. They are our heroes. We're clapping hands for them even if they do wrong. <laughs> Please uh, expand on that The one. political engagements are not there anymore. Where are the branches? Let's start with the branches. Where, are the where is the political education to start with? Now is the issue of money. Who has more money? Mm. Who can buy votes? Who can send this one? Uh, that issue of patriotism in terms of organizational policy is gone. Should, should we break it down from up there uh, 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 with regards to, for instance, the president himself of the NC, the Palapala issue? Let's start from the bottom going up. It's okay. always better. Uh, top, up, to, top down approach is... Okay, is good. Better. Let's start from because the bottom. Because if we start from the, from the bottom, it mm. tells us uh, as a liberation movement mm. and as a civic-oriented organization, where is that civic activity that we, we have seen? Only parties these days. People are just enjoying life. You even get to the uh, uh, ANC. It doesn't have money. Mayors, individuals have more money than the organization itself. Why? Mm. It means corruption has been institutionalized. And, and, and also there's a thin line now. 
it's like when you are in position of leadership, suddenly you are a businessman. Suddenly you own something that generates cash. Cash. Suddenly you have an establishment somewhere. That is actually a common trend that when you go to Pretoria, they will show you of a senior politician with a lot of tankers, no. with a lot of plant, with a, a, a hotel, with a lodge. They will show you those things. Is it a coincidence that suddenly people in the position of leadership are now business leaders? You know, in a way, if you sit, if you sit um, especially in the evening with people who are drinking nice, expensive beverages, Mm. They will tell you most of those establishments are there to clean money. But in my opinion, I think it's also, it's, it's a good thing to do so mm. that you must not depend on voters. Remember, there's a difference between deployment and employment. Mm. So with a deployment, it means you are, you are there to serve the nation. You must be a servant of the people. But now the problem which we are having now, we made our politicians to, we are... Still boys, hmm. we are their servants now, instead of the other way around. And, and I think before you came to that, you were mentioning the issue of we can't even take them to task when they are going wrong. We must clap hands when uh, someone is doing wrong. We cannot even reprove someone uh, uh, behaving like a menace in public because he's our leader. The problem is why? Modern leaders are not, they don't want you to criticize whatever that they are saying. Yeah. Remember in the past, what we used to do is, if you issue a paper or whatever, discussion document or whatever, we, we used to di digest it and dissect it. Mm. We will critique it, bring it back to you. When it comes out, it's a fine material. Mm. Like what you do when you do your research, your proposal. It, it goes to and fro, to and fro, until it's a fine material. But these days, you criticize one of these leaders, you are out. Even asking you're questions. A yeah, you're a threat. I, I, I am personally painted with a red pa a paint right now, uh, whereby in those corners when they are sitting, they are saying, nah, we must deal with Capuchin. For asking questions to say, but what kind of behavior is this? You see, that is one of the things which which has led to this particular decline. Remember the nation now, comrades must understand, they are leading a very sophisticated nation. Mm. People are learning now. There is a lot of communication. Uh, propaganda sometimes is diffused by social media. Now we, me and you are talking on podcasts, something which was not there in the past. Mm. We used to listen to Radio Freedom, which made us to be conscious. Mm. more and more and more but now people can listen to all these things and and you must also be careful of the media as well because if they want to deal with you they deal with you they take a snippet of where you're saying something joking and then they make it public but the decline right now uh, of the nc support uh, you're saying it's attributed to the behavior of leaders especially from the ground level yes the branches uh, the second one, which is the emergence and the, of the dark horse, the MK, come into play. Before, even before the MK, MK is, is, is uh, yeah, that one, it, it was unseen. The infighting. Oh. The infighting. Political infighting. Remember, uh, uh, being a politician is the only job where you get all the benefits without any qualification. As soon as you can corrupt certain people, then they go with you, you go to the conference, from the branch, uh, because the branches are not there anymore. Uh, they, they just fill in those slips and whatever. You have, you, you, they just elevate you, just like that. Then Almost leader. everywhere you go in the country, mm. ANC members call each other Bali. Yes. Those ones we are going to deal with. Those ones are about to seal. No, those ones who must make sure they don't appear in China. Uh, those ones, those ones. And you wonder, is this one party? In fact, they are more brutal yeah. to each other than those from other political parties. Because maybe they try to unite right now, got the election. But we all know these people are fighting. Yeah. But it's, no, no, you're right. You're talking about the same comrades wearing the same t-shirts. Yes. Going to the same conference. 
supposed to discuss the same policy, but instead of discussing policies, they discuss on how to deal with each other. That's what you are saying. We must process him. We must process him. In fighting, now look at it now. For the one percent, for the one percent, some people are turning in their graves. Mm. Let's talk about policy inconsistencies. The infighting also compromised the policy inconsistencies. Mm. There's no political organization which has got good policies like the ruling, the outgoing ruling party. <laughs> mm. Mm. Their policies are very clean and clear, but when are they going to be implemented? Let's take the land issue, for example. Let's take the issue of the traditional leaders. Now it's fashionable. Everybody's trying to talk about the traditional leaders from nowhere. Everybody's trying to talk about the land. Section 25. What happened? What happened? I don't know. So if, if there was a consistency on that, a consistency on conference resolutions, we'll be talking something else today. So you mentioned taking leaders into task, infighting in the party, factional battles in the party, policy inconsistency, also not implementing the policy, the emergence of the dark horse. Before MK. the emergence of the dark horse, arrogance. <laughs> arrogance of, 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 of leaders. Hmm. Can you break it down a little this bit? Majority of the comrades, once they are in leadership, they become so arrogant. They become celebrities. You can't tell them anything. You know this arrogance of even someone believing that he or she can decide if your kids eat or not. That, that arrogance that Mchana will deal with you. No, that one is what they're specializing in. Capacione, there's, there's somebody whom I know now. The wife is employed by a certain municipality. Because some of the leaders don't like the husband, they are busy plotting that the wife must be dismissed from that particular municipality. What do you call that? That's bull. That's bull. And if leaders are going to continue doing that, you must know that you are killing the organization which has brought us to where we are today. It's very sad. How the, the same thing. The same thing. Their organization, their organization. But it's one ANC. Mm. Let's, let's look at uh, what President Zuma used to say. Uh, ANC of Cyril Ramaphosa. Sir Ramaphosa. You see, that, that exchanging of, 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 of tackling the organization, mm. it shows a level of arrogance. Somewhere, somehow, and remember some of these battles, we don't know them because they're inside. Some of these battles, they are, they are, they are battles from exile. They are old battles that we don't know about. Mm. And now because there's money... Some are historical. They are historical battles. So now that we have this money and young, some of the young people, they want to be seen, they want to come into the limelight, they are used to fight these battles. That is where the problem is, and that is career limiting. <laughs> so we, we, we have a situation where money has replaced credibility. Yes, sir. In the organization. Where's the credibility? And people are now uh, uh, woke. People are now observing these things. People are now suffering the consequences of some of the actions. And you expect them to vote for you. You see? And I mean, as a leader, there's a certain decorum and public uh, conduct that you must have. Mm. We've seen how reckless leaders are. You, do you know that with some... You know, I asked a certain young person, what did you vote for? Mm. And the person told me, no, I voted for a certain party. Kid, why? But you, you are a staunch supporter, man. Ari, we were at an establishment. I was sitting with a girl. Mm. And someone came, the waitress, mm. and said, so-and-so wants your number. When he asked, it's a leader of a party. Who thinks you don't deserve to be with a beautiful girl? That person started to hate the movement from there. You see? So those, those here, are, here in coffee, here. You see, those are some of the issues where arrogance of, because of money, because of the organization which puts you there. I, I need us to be very clear. We need to separate leadership from the organization. Yeah. So that we must be able to dissect even other parties. So that they must also learn from this one. Yeah. Because this is a this, this is a crisis. This is a crisis. Remember now, 
if if this organization does not come back in honesty there's a problem of policy in this country the the the, the, the economics the economies are going to suffer mm. i know most of the parties are talking about uh, uh, renewing the economy but remember renewing the economy is not an overnight thing mm -mm. you can't do it overnight mm. you still have to disengage from the processes and the existing structures you cannot just engage the economy like boom like what these leaders are doing good what's another factor that led to the decline because you uh, there's a problem of selective uh, renewal mm. there was a call for organizational renewal but if you check this renewal it is it was very selective mm. it depends on who has to be dealt with who, who has must to step be, aside who, who must step it's aside. a selective step aside you know so th that on its own had detrimental impact because some of the people decided oh we're not voting for this one let's go for an an no, no, for a dark horse which will save us mm. You see, the dark horse was, was my brother, whoever was behind that. A sophisticated I, machinery. It's a sophisticated I, machinery. I, I, I mean, right now, I can, I believe they have the most beautiful apparel. Yeah. Right now, in the country, when they were coming to, their t-shirts are nice. I'm telling you that if they didn't have the, the badge of MK, <laughs> I would want to wear some, some of those things. The, uh, uh, and and I think as a neutral person, as a media guy, I must be allowed to wear anything I want to wear. I'm telling you, if I have to wear any regalia of a political party, I'm going yeah. to start with MK. Yeah. So the last thing that I, I also, from my thematic uh, analysis, is yeah. uh, self-enrichment than the organization. That is also one of the problems which is actually mm. there. I think we touched some of the issues. So you think the movement is hijacked? by people who don't want change in people's lives yeah. but people who see it as an opportunity to enrich themselves uh, you know <laughs> in pretoria right now i know of people in Gauteng, uh, uh, Joe, Joe Beckfall, i know of people who are in the nc mm. leaders who supply services like especially water tankers for instance, there are leaders who don't want the Hamas Kral issue to be solved because they are rigging millions from that problem. No, no, that's true. Remember, in one of my findings, I also spoke about it when I was doing my research on, on uh, sanitation. I spoke yeah. about that one. It has been there. I mean, if you have old infrastructure and you don't want to revamp it, what does that, what does that say? Mm. If you have old infrastructure, you don't want to expand it while you have got more... Uh, 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 population growth. What does that say? It says you don't care about the people and you expect the same people to vote for you. Let's talk about the EFF's performance. This It's, um, it's very stagnant. Mm. If you check throughout the provinces. Last time they did how much? 10.2 10. or something. I can't remember the actual yeah. percentage but uh, if you check now. Remember there the were also some... You see the, 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 this issue of infightings. Mm. It also had an impact on on the EFF as well. They had infights. You know, the Limpopo. There's one comrade who oh. was very local, moved to the ANC. Yes. And if you check the ANC in Limpopo now, it has gone up. The ANC is a champion. Of, yes. It shows yeah. that that particular comrade went and uh, recruited in the he ate mm. from the from the voters of the EFF. That on its own shows that. In fighting sometimes is we don't know how it came in but it's, it's, it's a problem the other issue there was a the issue of uh, borders hmm. if you if you if you analyze the issue of borders it has compromised the the, the EFF tremendously hmm. open the borders um, if you check the last the in Polokwane when there was a um, um, their last closing rally the leader tried to unpack the issue of borders but unfortunately it was too late many mm. people did not even listen to that uh, particular speech it was very very late this is something that needs to be revisited the way he unpacked it at Polkwan is the way that it was supposed to be canvassed from the beginning
mm. so that at least people can have a full understanding of what they are talking about in terms of, of, of the borders. And the other thing which might have impacted, there's a misinterpretation from that speech. Mm. You remember uh, President Ramaphosa said they are going to increase money from 350 to 700 and something. Yeah. And then the leader of the EFF was trying to unpack it to, to ensure that those who are more educated should get more money. Yeah. But now the media, when they took out the clips, mm. they made it look like he's saying those who, do, who are not educated must not get anything. Oh, it's a, it's a play there by the media. Yes, there was a, a technicality, which mm. is... And, and one common thing that the media does is to take a clip of Julius Malé and interpret it the way they want to and communicate it to push a certain narrative where they remove it out of the whole context. Mm. And I think they've worn very well with such. The, the, the other thing which, according to the analysis... Uh, that I made is the issue of tenders, scrapping of tenders. Mm. You remember this is an issue of action A, action SA and uh, and and uh, EFF. Yeah, scrapping of tenders, insourcing, and so forth and so forth. If you check some of the people, majority of the people who voted for 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 MK are the people who are in business and doing tenders because according to them, it's just an issue of saying tenders are closed today. Mm. The, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So that is one of the things that if, if you analyze it from, from that perspective, it will tell you that it, 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 it compromised uh, uh, the EFF uh, 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 tremendously. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. No, no, it's very interesting. Um, and the issue of the, the elders in terms of the EFF are having a problem with the leader. Mm. The elders. You mean are, older, older people? Yeah, older people in society. The generation before us. Mm. The way he's criticizing some of the leaders, especially the president. Mm. People are complaining that we need to vote for this man, but the way he's criticizing his elders. Remember, the discipline of the past is not the same as now. Mm. That had a serious impact on on the organization. So that is something that also needs to be looked into, especially when going to local government uh, uh, elections. Yeah. That but now, in all honesty, I think EFF has done well. Uh, overall, looking at the last time in terms of what they've secured. Right now, they are on around 9.4%. 9, 9 last time, they were 10.2%. Uh, we don't know what's going to be the final result. But all I can tell you is that the biggest loser right now, the party that bled, is the ANC. And it has bled this much. And I think one party that should be happy with the gains is also the DA. Mm. They might they managed to, for now they they still held on Cape Town, uh, uh, Western Cape, and also they are there in the space. You, you look at what's happening also in Gauteng. Mm. They are also trailing behind the ANC. If the the results have been changed, and uh, I want us to get into something now. No, no before we get to something, mm. the other thing which which the EFF also needs to look into. You remember when they were campaigning for the million members to yeah. achieve something? Yeah. If they can uh, redeploy that strategy, re-employ it going forward, mm. I think it can also work well for them. But I would love to think that a, 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 um, a political party that is now well-situated, looking at the future, is the EFF because they've invested in young people. You look at the votes that are coming from young people who are now woke and politically conscious. If they can nurture that, they, 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 they go and emphasize more on political education. I think that is their gold mine because some is still their sentiments. Um, uh, uh, I mean, I was talking to my mom. Mm. You can't tell her anything. No matter what, you tell her of any party, she will come out rocking the full regalia of the ANC. And a certain t shirt that she's been wearing towards the election that has Mandela on. You'll never say anything. Exactly. But right now we have people who are now young and conscious who are associating with the radicalism and everything, the change that the EFF is actually bringing. And I also think the issue of uh, open border, I think it was not explained well. Mm, it uh, but uh, when explained well, people can understand what the party really means. But also I would say maybe sometimes 
people, uh, the parties, political parties should differentiate between policy and principle. But we're talking voters. Remember, voters, the they, people will hear what they want to say. And, mm. and no, my, my point is that you had fifty, you had fifty more people who were contesting the, in the same space. Whatever mm. that you say, they take it out of context. My point is that sometimes a principle should not necessarily be communicated. Yeah, you understand. Sometimes a principle shouldn't be a policy. I'm saying that if there's issues of, uh, 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 for instance. Mabahambe or anything, which some parties are using it as a campaign, we're gone. I think those things you can set aside, still communicate other things while you're having those things at the back. Exactly. But now... The last one, which, which also the elders, I nearly forgot it uh, mm -hmm. when on, on, on the findings, is the issue of collapsing, like your state of the nation. People are saying, but it is 10 years now. It's more than 10 years using the same strategy over and over. Now you start to lose those people who who understand the importance of all these gatherings, mm. uh, state of the municipalities, whatever. People are complaining about those things. Mm. And, mm. and now, now you can see that they also they are also reflecting in a way. Yeah. So those are the those are the themes that I managed to gather in terms I see. Of, of I see. I just don't want this in this uh, <laughs> uh, discussion to be very long. Mara, also, it's very sad to see uh, a giant movement like the NC, where it is right now. A movement that changed most of our lives. Yeah. A movement that uh, liberated us. A movement that set up structures. I mean, uh, from Bantu stands, apartheid, 94, and they went into office and arranged and organized South Africa, whereby the West was actually uh, 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 said about what was going to happen. It's sad to see that the marvelous, glorious movement goes down the way it's going down. Indeed, by that elephant, yes. they're eating it bit by bit, and then it looks like we are seeing it at a more faster pace. But I want us to discuss one last matter. Yeah. It looks like we are going to coalition politics. Uh, uh, how do you analyze them? Uh, already, a simple one, Northern Cape, they have done counting, which is 49% uh, is the ANC. And I think uh, uh, trailing behind is the EFF uh, and everything. They've got 49. Uh, right now, Mpumalanga, they're around 50%. They're still counting, which is Takateki. Uh, uh, KZN, they lost it this uh, The last time I checked, uh, IFP was in the 50s. Uh, uh, MK was in the 50s, 50-something percent. And IFP and ANC, 18%, 18%. What... Are we likely to see? Nationally, we have 42%, 41 point something, which is the NC leading DA, 22%. We have MK, 13%, uh, uh, and EFF at 9%. What do you think is likely to happen here? The, the, there's a book also, Muzandile, is it Muzandile Masin, the former mayor of Ikurule? Yes. He wrote a book on coalitions. Yeah. I remember the book was launched when we were at the SAPAM conference at some point in Devon. You can see even the mayor foresaw that the behavior of the comrades mm. is leading towards a What we are war. facing now. Yes. Some of the comrades who are schooled knew that we are going heading for a brick wall. Mm. And now, the question is, in terms of coalitions, the level of maturity, political maturity. Mm. Because the problem in South Africa, which we have now, is not service deliver. Mm -mm. It's what we what do we get out of the coalition? Yeah. As, yeah. As, actually, it's more of individuals saving themselves than the organizations and implementing their policies. Mm. And we've moved away from the Freedom Charter. Most of the organizations are saying we're sticking to the Freedom Charter. Remember, the Freedom Charter was made for five uh, Congress movements. It was an adoption of for five Congress movements at that time. But now, if we want to implement it, but we are looking at ourselves more than the Freedom Charter itself, something is wrong. If we can have a matured coalition, which will take the country forward, we'll be fine. What are we likely to see? Do you think ANC at a national scale can uh, uh, go to bed with uh, the DA? Uh, because if it goes with the DA, it means the DA will be coming with 22%. They are now at 41%. It's outright majority there. Do you think 
they will go with uh, uh, MK, which is 13%. Uh, what is likely to happen? My brother, there's a lot of chess going on there. It's happening. It, they, no, no, there's a lot of chess mm. going on. If you check um, from the analysis of the politics of South Africa, mm. um, Paul has been positioned as the deputy president. Mm. Because of these infightings which are there, which is rumored, the strategy is to have the palapala issue, having the president being uh, stepping aside, Paul taking over. It's rumored that Paul is more, it was No, but, but Prof, <laughs> I want you to now give me possible scenarios without entertaining what we think is being discussed from an academic point of view. It's, to be honest with you now, all the political parties, if you, if you analyze them from the media, because my analysis is based from what they've been saying, they are mm. saying, all of them are saying, we are open to discuss with everybody. Do, except do, the moon, except that uh, moon, the pen, moon shot, moon which, which is dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, 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 they are saying, but no, 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 no. Mm. Uh, they are not discussing with the ANC. Mm. Action SA is saying it's not discussing with the ANC, so forth and so forth. But the ANC is saying we are discussing with everybody, which shows you that uh, as of now, you cannot guess what is going to happen. But if, for instance, what do you think would happen after if the ANC go into a coalition with the DA? I foresee a disaster. I what? think it's suicidal, don't you think it's so? It's a disaster. What, what, what policies mm. are they agreeing? Unless if the ANC is saying we are prepared to, to implement the policies of the Democratic Alliance as is. Because I don't think the DA is prepared to move an inch and, mm. and, and accommodate the black majority. I'm personally not ready to have John Stainers as the deputy president. Uh, I would actually even uh, favor a likely scenario because, you know, according to me, MK is NC. If they go to Bergera, they can be NC. If they can go with the EFF, also it's really good. Uh, 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 it's also the NC. Uh, and I think maybe they can still advocate for policies that are pro-black. You know, I want us to, to close this. I didn't want us to... It, it to be very, very long. But if there's anything you want to say, uh, please say it so that I can wrap it up. No, no. If you check all those parties that you spoke about, if actually almost all the all the 50 something, except the Freedom Front Plus and the DA, if you check, what is the fundamental difference in terms of their manifesto and the policy uh, outline? It's almost the same as the ANC. It's mm. just that because of these infightings, they have to move away. All those people, their policies are the same. That's what I can say. There's no fundamental difference amongst mm. them. Thank you. Thank you for viewing uh, Just Talk with DJ Capacito, especially around this busy time, busy time of elections. I know most of you are happy. Most of you are also unhappy with what's happening. Some of the high bloods are very high. Some are very uh, relaxed right now and very happy with currently what's happening. We just wanted to just touch on what's really happening and also touch with you, our supporters and viewers. Don't forget to subscribe subscribe and thank you again for listening to Just Talk with DJ Kapachi. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino.